give them another big round of applause. Amen. You know, when you see your own kid up there, you're a little happy and excited, but you're always wondering what they're going to do, right? You're like, oh, no. <laughs> Maybe I'm the only one that feels that way, right? The, uh, but it's exciting. Uh, my son asked me on the way home, hey, Dad, is that, is that Drummer Boy's song, is that in the Bible? I said, well, not necessarily, but it's a really good story, man. We really like it. And so it's really exciting. But I don't know about you, but I want you to tell somebody, if you haven't told anyone yet, just turn around and tell somebody, Merry Christmas. Right? It's Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you this holiday season. December, we're celebrating the reason for the season. And we started our Christmas off in a very unusual way. Uh, yesterday, we spent most of the day decorating, but in order to psych ourselves up and really get ready, get all fired up, because it's like an all-day event decorating, right? We went, we got facials. Yes, yes. Come on, give me a hand clap. I suffered through that. No, it was, it was, it was fun. It was exciting. My wife and I got facials, and if you haven't seen our Facebook page, we had this uh, gold mask put on us, and it's supposed to hydrate you. Yeah, right. I didn't believe that, brother. I could have done that with a toya. Uh, uh, and so, you know, you, but you're there. It's, honestly, it's my first time ever uh, having this done, and it was very interesting and uh, exciting, and at the same time, and weird, you know, people touching you. is kind of strange. But uh, they put all this stuff on your face, so it was really neat. And so, uh, amazing thing that we, that, you know, that's the way we started our day with our facials. And to me, it was very new. It was brand new. It was the first time ever. And I stopped to think about all these new things that are created and new things that are invented. And, you know, the other day I heard, uh, I saw an article that iPhone may be coming out with an iPhone 8. And I remember, you know, when there was no iPhone at all and you had the dial-up, right? And you could dial up forever. And it's interesting because once the iPhone is created... It opens up all these different possibilities, right? So before the iPhone, you know, we, we would have never imagined being able to walk around with the phone at all because there used to be these big giant boxes and, and before that the, the round one with the wire and all of a sudden from, went from the big giant phone that you rolled up in into the little bitty tiny phones and then now you even have a, a watch phone, right? Star Trek, all the Star Trek people know what I'm talking about. So you got this watch phone. All these possibilities are created. And then with the iPhone and, and, and the Androids, it gets even more dramatic, right? You get all these apps, you know, you got, you got an app for checking your heart rate, an app for counting your footsteps, an app for games and videos. You got an app for everything. We even have a TC app. Come on, somebody, say amen. Yeah, you need to download that TC app, man. We got an app for that. The, uh, so you got all these apps. All these possibilities are created in the new things. And you know, I started to think about Christmas, and here's something that I want you to know. When heaven comes to earth, Jesus makes new creation possible. Jesus makes new life possible. And as we start our series, the whole month of December is really about when heaven comes to earth. And there's all these different ways we're going to express that and communicate that through the different productions for the children and through the Great Bahar giveaway and through the uh, balcony uh, presentation. And every single time you're going to hear a follow-up message to that, talking about when heaven comes to earth, how Jesus makes all things new, how Jesus makes all these possibilities come into play. When heaven comes to earth, hope is possible. No matter what you've done or where you've been or where you've gone through or where you've come from, Jesus makes hope possible. Jesus makes hope arise in hopeless situations and things that look dramatic and deadly and like end of the world scenario. We've all been there. Jesus makes a way out. Jesus makes a way of escape where it looks like it was all going to be over. When heaven comes to earth, Jesus makes healing possible. Jesus makes help possible. When heaven comes to earth, heaven makes the impossible possible. And you can begin to experience the God, uh, God's love in your family and in your relationships. And whether you were abandoned as a child, whether you were left, and whether you grew up without a mom or without a dad or without both, Jesus makes healing and reconciliation possible. When Jesus comes, Jesus makes all things possible. Jesus makes a new creation possible. Jesus makes the fact that you and I can be here today possible. Can somebody say amen? Man, when heaven comes to earth, Jesus makes everything possible. You know, I want you to know something. 
You know, whether, if you're a parent here today, you know it's never too late to be the parent you were meant to be. You know what I realize? You can be like 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years old. You're still uh, uh, your parents, mijo and mija. Come on, somebody, if you're a son, right? My mom was here the other day. Boy, I'm still baby boy. What's up? Man, I ain't good when she was here too, man. You know, it's never too late to be the mom or dad you were supposed to be. And sons and daughters, it is never too late to be the son and the daughter you were meant to be. Doesn't matter how far you strayed, how far you went, how far, how bad you got lost, or what you did. You may be, no matter what you've done, it is never too late for us. Come on, somebody say amen. Jesus makes that possible. Jesus makes the impossible possible. And husbands and wives, I want you to know something. Man, it's, it's never too late to have the marriage you, you dreamt of. It's never too late to have the marriage you wanted all your life. It's never too late to have the, have, be the husband or be the wife that you dreamt of being and married to the husband and married to the wife that you dreamt of all your life. It's absolutely never too late. Why? Because when heaven comes to earth, Jesus makes all things possible. Amen. And you know, sometimes, man, you're single and you're thinking, man, the boat has passed me by. You're like 25-year-old. You think the boat has passed you by. Come on now. The boat is just getting loaded at 25. Come on. <laughs> you know, it's never too late. As a single person, no matter what, where you're at, what God's doing, where, where, it's never too late to start that business. Come on, somebody. It's never too late to go back to school. Somebody say amen. It's never too late to find that special someone. Come on, somebody say amen. It does not matter how old you are. When heaven comes to earth, Jesus makes all things a possibility. Jesus makes all things possible. You know, the birth of Jesus is about God making all things new. The coming of Jesus creates infinite possibilities. Open your Bibles with me this morning to Luke chapter 2. Open your Bibles with me this morning to Luke chapter 2. We're going to read verses 1 to 20. We're going to kind of get into the scripture and sit there for a few minutes. And then I want to, I want to, I want to just make a presentation today i want to i want to challenge you i want to encourage you i want to invite you i want to point you to a very important decision this holiday season luke chapter 2 verses 1 to 20 look at what it says reading out of the niv talking about the story of jesus and the incarnation and the birth of christ and it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus and that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee and out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was out of the house and the lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. And verse 6 says, So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. Now there, there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over the flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. And then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be for all the people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And verse 13 says, And suddenly there was with, with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. So it was... When the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph 
and the baby lying in the manger. Verse 17. Now when they had seen him, they had made widely known the sayings which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her part, in her heart, excuse me. And verse 20 says, And then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God all for all the things that they had heard and seen, and it was told to them. Isn't this a wonderful sight and a powerful story of an awesome announcement? And the Bible says it was a good thing. The Bible says it was good news. And, and the angels came and said, this is good news. This is good tidings. This is, this is a powerful statement, a, a wonderful statement, and it's good for everybody. It's good for all the peoples of the earth, all the nations and tribes. It's good that, that not only you would know, but that everybody would know. This announcement is global. Come on, somebody. This is like a global, worldwide event that is taking place that will impact human history and humankind and all of creation for all eternity. This is a wonderful thing. And the announcement comes to shepherds. And it's interesting because the shepherds were working at night, and I was thinking to myself, I wonder these brothers were working the night shift or the graveyard shift. How many know what I'm talking about? The graveyard shift is hard, boy. It's hard to stay awake late at night, right? The, uh, so, so here they are, shepherds, and they're working, and, and an announcement comes, and they see this vision. They see this heavenly host appear, and, and of course they're going to be scared to death. Of course, of course they're going to be taken. They're going to be taken by surprise. And yet there's a declaration of something great, of something awesome happening in Bethlehem. Something great, something awesome happening in in Santa Ana. Come on, somebody. Something great, something awesome that's going to take place that if they will get there and go and see it and witness it and be in the presence of it, they will be captivated by it and they'll never forget it and they'll always give witness, always give testimony to what they saw and what they experienced and what they came to know for themselves. And so they went to church. I mean, they went to Bethlehem. Come on now. There they were, seeking, looking, wanting to bear witness, wanting to be in the presence of this truth that they heard, wanting to experience this powerful declaration, wanting to see for themselves, wanting to know this this miracle of God for themselves. Hearing it wasn't enough. They wanted to personalize it. And so they took some time off work. Come on now. They took a vacay. They took a half day. They took some personal leave time. Because they didn't want to miss it. And there they are. There they are. Interesting thing about what the angel says to the shepherds. Not only is this good tidings, is this a great thing, is this a wonderful thing, in the town of Bethlehem will be born, but, but the angel says something very powerful, and here's what he says, and I want to read it to you. The angel says to the shepherds watching their flocks that night, here's what the angel of the Lord said, do not be afraid, I bring you good news of great joy, in verses 10 through 11, Great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Everybody say that with me, Christ the Lord. He is Christ the Lord. The announcement is about Jesus is Lord. The announcement is about our Lord and Savior. The announcement is about Christ the Lord. Did you know there's more than 700 references to Jesus as Lord in the New Testament? Did you know that? 700 references to Jesus as Lord in the the New Testament. Absolutely amazing that one of the main primary themes of the whole witness of Scripture has to do with the coming of the Messiah, has to do with with, with God as Savior, as Liberator, as Creator, having a Son. And then in the New Testament, doesn't want you to miss, miss it, doesn't want you to mistake it, doesn't want you to misunderstand it. The New Testament is absolutely certain in communicating that Jesus Christ is Lord. Everywhere you look throughout the New Testament, more than 700 references. Can you believe that? Do not be afraid, the angel says. Do not be afraid, the angel says. Do not be afraid, mom and dad. 
the angel says. Do not be afraid, sons and daughters. Do not be afraid, husbands and wives. Do not be afraid, familia. Do not be afraid, Templo Calvario Church. Jesus Christ is still Lord. Can somebody say amen? The angel makes a powerful declaration. You know, when I thought about this, and I thought about, man, this declaration about Lord, you know, this, this, this Greek word for Lord has to do with kurios. There's a Greek word for Lord has to do with kurios, and this word for Lord has to do with somebody that is in authority. Somebody that is in supreme authority, somebody that is in maximum authority, somebody that is in control, somebody that is, that is supervising, overseeing, governing, somebody that is, that is ruling and reigning. This, this, this issue of Lord, Christ is Lord, has to do with authority. It has to do with control. It has to do with with. with, with Allowing and, and, and knowing and, and surrendering and, and, and acknowledging Christ as Lord. The angel says Christ is Lord. You know, when I, when I thought about this, man, I thought about remote control. You know how hard it is to get with the remote control at home? That's a struggle right there, boy. Don't let a football game be on and then you got to give up the remote control. No, you'd be freaking out. You know, it, when we say Jesus Christ is Lord, and isn't it interesting that God is saying, hey, I want you to give me the remote control of your life. I want you to make me Lord of your life, and I want you to allow me to lead you, to direct you, to guide you. I want you to allow me to be in control of your life. Can you, Jesus Christ is Lord. Here's this powerful declaration. Here's this powerful statement. Here's this powerful uh, witness about who Jesus is. Not just a good person, not just a good teacher, not just somebody that was moral, not just somebody that was godly, not just another prophet, not just a particular priest, but Lord is what the declaration is. More than 700 times. Christ is Lord. 700 times in the New Testament. You know what occurred to me? You know what I think this means for us at Jesus Christ? This Christmas season. Here's what I think is important. I think this Christmas season, my challenge to you is make Jesus the Lord of your life. Make Jesus the Lord of your life. Make Jesus the Lord of your life. You know, when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, you're not making him Lord by making him the Lord of your life. He already is the Lord. When we make Jesus the Lord of our life, when we surrender to Jesus, when we give God control, when we acknowledge what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary, we're not then making him Lord. He already is Lord. We're not acknowledging something that's not true. We're acknowledging something that is true. We're aligning ourselves. We're lining up to the truth about who we really are. So when we make Jesus Lord, we're being the sons and daughters of God that we were created to be as covenant partners, as faithful witnesses, as our Heavenly Father's children. When we make Jesus Lord. This Christmas holiday season, I want to encourage you to surrender to the Lord. Surrender your life to the Lord. When, when, and when you surrender, you're going to relinquish control. When you surrender, you're, you're going to give Jesus the remote control of your life. You're not going to be in charge, man. You're going to say, God, what do you want to do? God, where do you want me to go? God, where do you want me to serve? God, what do you want me to give? God, God, you are in control of my life, Lord. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. And you know what? That's kind of hard to do, man. A lot of us, I tell you, it's a lot easier to kind of sort of surrender than it is to totally surrender. Right? Kind of sort of surrendering is a lot easier. Like partially surrendering, right? Halfway surrendering. Orale, not all the way, just kind of sort of. 
And it's interesting because the Bible talks about in Luke chapter 6, verse 46, when Jesus says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do what I say? Because what sometimes when we kind of sort of surrender, we halfway surrender, we, we, we time out surrender, we, 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 we second quarter surrender. We don't go fourth quarter, we second quarter surrender. Sometimes we believe in the Lord, but we don't trust him with everything, man. Sometimes when we, when, we, when we first have surrender, we believe in the Lord, but we still do whatever we want because it's ours, not God's. When we, well, sometimes when we kind of sort of partially surrender, we believe in the Lord, but we don't let go. We don't give God control. We partially surrender. And the interesting thing is, is that sometimes I think we partially surrender in our lives. You know why? Because we don't really know God. We don't know our Heavenly Father like, like we're supposed to. I think sometimes we partially surrender because we have a disconnect. We, we're not connected to the Lord like we're supposed to. We don't have that intimacy in that relationship. Do you know why? Because when we partially, when we partially surrender, we really don't know our Heavenly Father. You know what trips me out about my kids? Can I get some water, babe? You know what trips me out about my kids? Is that sometimes, you know, my kids, when we're shopping or we're buying stuff or we're doing things, and uh, thank you, honey. And, and, and we'll go shopping and, and making some decision about finances and things of that nature. Sometimes your kids will have a really hard problem, like, trusting you, right? Sometimes your kids will just struggle. They'll have a hard problem trusting, you know, your decision about this toy, that toy, or whatever, what, what you're going to buy and things of that nature. And, and so our, sometimes our kids will just struggle and, and they'll have a hard time trusting our decisions. They'll have a hard time taking our guidance sometimes because I think sometimes our kids, our kids may want to, no, man, dad doesn't have what's best for me. Dad's not seeing the whole thing. Dad doesn't really care. Dad doesn't know. Dad, I don't know if dad fully understands. And, and, and sometimes our kids will struggle. You know, it's amazing when you're a daddy. How many, how, many, how many papas do I have in the, in the room here? What's up? All the daddies in the house. What's up? And moms, amen. You and I both know we love our kids. We give our lives for our kids. We put everything on hold for our children. We want them to go with and we will go without and we don't have a problem with it. We see our kids happy. We see them excited. We see them blessed. We see them growing up, being young men and women of God. And they start getting taller and taller. And we know one day they're going to end up taller than we are. How many know what I'm talking about, boy? I'm almost there. We want the sky. We want the world for them. We, the sky is the limit for our mijos and mijas. And sometimes I wonder, you got to be kidding, man. How could you not trust us? we your mamas and daddies, man. We love you. I want you to flip the script real quick. Can you imagine? That's how God feels about us. Can you imagine that's how the Lord feels about you? And sometimes when we partially trust what we're just saying, God, you know, we're not, and, and, and the issue is, is that God loves you so much, man. God has your best interests in mind. God has a future and a purpose and a plan. And I know it's hard sometimes, but God has set things up. God is overseeing. God is governing. God is providing. And then we will just follow and obey and trust him in every area of our lives, not partially, not in some areas, but in every area in our dating relationships, in our tithe and offerings, in our decisions on what we do and where we live and where we go and who we run with and who we don't, in the time and the schedule of our day, in our devo, in our prayer, in our sacrifices to serve. If we would just trust him. Partially surrendering. Fully surrendering. You know why this is important? You know, this impacts every area of our life. I think if you can totally surrender to the Lord, hear me out here. I think if you can totally surrender to the Lord, you will be a better husband. I think if you can totally surrender to the Lord, you'll be a better dad. 
I think if you can totally surrender to the Lord and trust Him, you'll be a better friend. You'll be a better brother. You know why? Because you'll know how to trust, number one. And you'll know that your trust for God defines who you are and how you relate to everybody else. Because your life is in God's hands. And at the end of the day, He is in total control. Can you say with me, Christ is Lord? What are some things maybe that you're struggling, surrendering to the Lord? As I close this morning, you know, sometimes... Let me have the worship team come up here. Sometimes I think maybe there may be some areas in our lives that may, we may be struggling with, some, some things that are going on, uh, whether you're married or single, maybe in your health, maybe your temper. Maybe there's been some things, some ways that you've been living that haven't changed, that, that need to change, that better change, that, that's supposed to change, and it's time they change, right? Maybe there's some different ways of talking and of acting. Maybe there's some words that you've been using you don't need to use anymore because that's not who you are. That was the partially trust side. That's not how you wrote a day because you've surrendered fully. You've given God over your vocabulary. You've given God over some bad habits that are keeping you unhealthy. And you're totally trusting. You're totally following. You're totally obeying. You're totally surrendering to Him in every area of your life. What about surrendering in your commitment to the Lord? What about surrendering in your time? What about surrendering not just what you do with your time, but surrendering that time so that you, you've got worship that is at the center? What if you need to change the channel on your radio, man? You just started walking with the Lord. You just started to live for Jesus, and you're still rocking out and jamming and slamming and all that, all that, all that um, uh, 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 music, and, and you just need to commit. You need to tithe some of your time in the car to worship you need to tie some of your time in television to, to Christian uh, 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 movies or Christian uh, 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 praise or Christian video you need to tie some of your some of your time and devotional to the Lord where it's just quiet it's just you and him you know what I tripped out about the facial you know what I tripped out about the facial here I am with the facial, spending all this money. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. It wasn't that much. I'm just kidding. No, no. Money is not an object when you're in love. Come on, son. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You know what I tripped out? You know, it was one of the things the guy said while we were getting a facial. And he was talking about, you know, all these products that he wanted to sell us so that we could go home and and have a facial he said it's interesting he said you know when you have this facial and you do this you use these products he says you have to have time alone and you have to block out everything else even your husband he said I said hey bro that's not a good idea <laughs> I was like dude I don't trust you already man <laughs> I partially trusted that brother boy because he's trying to sell us something he said, you, you, you got to have block out everything else. You have to have time alone. And you have to experience the moment. And I thought it was very interesting that here somebody was selling me something he clearly had a, a, a commission to make. Selling me something. And here God is giving me everything God's goodness, God's grace, God's forgiveness, a purpose God's plan we call the Bible and a destiny in Him and He ain't charging me a penny, isn't that something? come on somebody give the Lord a hand clap I want you to stand to your feet with me this morning There's a big difference. There's a big difference in calling Jesus Lord and surrendering to your Lord and Savior.
There's a big difference in calling Jesus Lord and surrendering to your Lord and Savior. Giving your life over to Him. Surrendering it all. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, Matthew chapter 7, it says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. And then the scripture says, But, but many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform miracles? And then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me, evildoers. There's a difference. The angel said, Jesus is Lord. The angel says to you, he says to me, Jesus is Lord. He already is Lord. He already is Lord. Now in a few minutes, I'm going to ask you to come up here and give your heart to the Lord. And here's what I want you to know before you do that, before you make that decision, before you join me here at this altar. Sometimes we ask God, God, prove yourself to me, and then I'll trust you. Right? Sometimes we say, God, show me that you're God, and then I'll trust you. God, uh, do these things on my checklist, and then I'll follow you, and then I'll obey you, and then I'll, then I will... You know what the Bible says? When you first trust the Lord, the Lord will prove himself to you. When you trust the Lord with your marriage, the Lord will prove himself to you. When you trust the Lord, if you're single, trust the Lord with your life before you think about getting married. Can somebody say amen? The Lord will prove himself to you. With your children, trust the Lord and the Lord will prove himself to you. With your finances, trust the Lord and the Lord will prove himself. It starts with making Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. That's where it starts. That's where it starts. Amen. Bow your head with me in prayer this morning. Father, today in the, we're just coming before you, God, just bringing our friends and family members in the body of Christ and the announcement that the angels made Born unto us today in the city of Santa Ana, right there at Templo Calvario Church, Jesus the Lord is present. Manifested, made real, here in the room, the announcement, the truth of that declaration. Realize. Father, there are shepherds in this sanctuary this morning, male and female alike, married and single, young and old, that the announcement is coming to, that the word of the Lord is penetrating their hearts and their minds. They know it's from you, God. They know today is their day. They are to be in the presence of of Christ the Lord and Jesus today is the day that they are to make Jesus Lord of their lives today is the day today is the day today is the day as you have your heads bowed today is your day I want to invite you to give God total control of your life I want to invite you to surrender to Jesus. I want to invite you to trust the Lord. 
with your life. To put your faith and trust in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To give it all to Him. And not rely on yourself. To hand over the remote control. Let me have some uh, leaders just step up here at the altar. Let me have some of our life group leaders and lead team leaders. So we're going to pray with you. I'm gonna, we're going to pray with you. Just step up here at the altar. As the worship team sings this song, we'll be standing up here ready to receive you. If that's you today, you say, man, today I want to make Jesus the Lord of my life. I want to give God total control. I want to put my faith and trust in him. Just look up here for a minute. You know what I learned about karma? Karma is a bad thing. You know why? You never know how good or bad you are. And there's no forgiveness in karma. There's no healing. There's no reconciliation. You don't know what's going to happen. Jesus broke the power of the lucky charm, the black, black cat, the, the walking under the ladder and everything else on the cross. Today is the day. Make Christ your Lord and Savior. Come on up here so we can pray with you. Let me have you guys scoot over a little bit. Let's sing that song. Let's sing that worship song. Come on up as the Lord would lead you. Today is your day.